Hi, everybody. Hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day. I know we did. Yes, and we were so lucky to have Bat Collins from Adair, Ireland joining us. This week, we're, we're going to take a little different turn. Uh, this episode, number eight, is going to be about advocacy. And we're going to have Jerry Ryan talking to us about his fundraiser, Elephants for Autism. Man, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And he'll be joined by Andrew Kavanaugh, a wonderful musician and music therapist. Then on Gigging with Jan, we'll be revisiting highlights from Rusty's birthday and pandemic spring breakout gig at Melani Cafe. Oh, my God. What a sexual fiasco that was. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be telling everyone about when I lived at Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. Well, that explains a lot. So if you're ready, let's go. Where? The Rusty and Jan Show. Oh, over here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> when the world comes crashing down on us, they're always there, they're always there, and they're always happy company. Because they care, oh yes, they care, and when you need to take out pain, well, no one else will be. Got a phone, I'm going Zoom. Thank God there are friends like you. I said thank God there are friends like you. Welcome to episode eight. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this one. You know, the weather is starting to break out there, Jan. Yes, and I can hardly wait to go to the beach. I can already smell the salt in the air. Oh, that's George's moussaka. <laughs> that's why we chose Rusty's Seaside Song to start off our presentation. This is a story about a small hotel between uh, First and Second Street down near the garden section of Ocean City. Um, it's a place that was called the Stenton Arms. It was on Stenton Avenue, and this is a, a story of the formative years I spent there at the shore. And the song is called At the Arms. At the Arms I went to find my way in a younger day at the arms, at the arms. I can't remember back, my mind is on the track at the arms, at the arms. I first met a girl at the arms, a young boy took a world. I found love at the arms. At the shore, you can't find romance. You can take a chance at the shore. On the beach, oh, she was next to me, hearing splashing sea on the beach. At the arms we held close that night At the arms love had found its height I found love At the arms Then a spark came from God knows where In a silent scare came a spark in the night came that bright in sky and the people cried from the sun and the arms only burned away and the memories came clear that day and each summer love would stop and pray for the arms
the arms you can see the sea it's a part of me at the arms at the arms it will be my home when I'm all alone at the arms at the arms I first met a girl at the arms a young boy took a world I found love at the arms I found with Jan. Welcome back to Gigging with Jan. We sure are excited about our upcoming guests over the next couple of weeks. March the 29th will feature the inspiring music of Keith Shaw. On April the 5th, we'll be talking to our Flute 66 bandmate, Lance Fingles, and... Hey. Wait a minute, aren't, isn't Flute 66 supposed to play at the Melalani Cafe? Yes, in June. In June? June, in June. what? June 13th, I think. Okay, that's <laughs> good. You hear that, Lance? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, on Ju April the 12th, Michael London will delight us with his soulful songs. Well, what else is going on, Jan? Well, this Friday and Saturday, March 26th and 27th, Elephants for Autism will take place online. It's a fundraiser benefit for Sprouting Connections, an organization that creates support and new job opportunities for young adults with autism and other special needs. For more information about this organization, visit SproutingConnections.org. And, of course, Jerry Ryan will be here later on to tell us more about it. That's right. We scheduled him, didn't we? Yes, we did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about any festivals coming up? Is this pandemic ever going to end? Well, yes. Here's what I found out. PFS Spring Thing will take place virtually on Memorial Day weekend. That's uh, May 28th through the 31st. Tickets are now on sale at pfs.org. Ooh, ooh. ooh. And then the Philadelphia Folk Festival will also take place online August the 19th through the 22nd. And for more information, you can also visit pfs.org. XFest will take place September 17th and 18th. I believe will be held in person at the Country Creek Winery, but we're still waiting for final confirmation on that. For more information, visit xfsmusic.org. That sounds like an excellent opportunity. <laughs> sure does. And, um, you know, as we hear about other festivals, we will let you know. If any of uh, you have any heard of any other festivals, please put it in comments and we'll pass along the information. Well, Jan, you know, I really enjoyed my birthday shingding at Melalani Cafe. And it was so great. To see people again in person and even get a few hugs. <laughs> Absolutely. I thought it was great how everyone was able to come together, but still be careful. And here are some highlights of our masked musicologist. We got that social distance too. Yeah, baby. Social distance too. I don't want to. I just want to go outside. I got them social distance blues. I'm doing what they tell me. I always wear my mask. I wash my hands to ABCs. I follow every task. I'm taking extra vitamins. I'm really pushing deep. Every day I keep away so that shit don't get me off. Oh. Tis a song, the sign of the weary. Hard times, hard times, come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Hard times come again no more. 
is a pale sorrow maiden who toils her life away with a heart warm better days before. Though her voice may be merry, she's sighing all the day. Hard times come again no more. Take it. There's plenty in the bank, there's water in the well Out where the roses grow, they don't charge you for the smell So I'm gone, 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 gone Watch me go again Shall I stay? Would it be a sin if I can help falling in love with you like a river flows surely to the sea? Darling, so it goes, some things are meant to be. Take my hand, Rusty, take my whole life too, for I can tell falling in love with Let's see what's cooking at Melanie Cafe. It's time for George's, George's Corner.
Hey everybody, welcome to George's Corner. I'm sitting right outside Malani. We've got some outdoor seating when the weather's great, like today. So we're open seven days a week. We have outdoor seating, we also do delivery. And you can just visit malani.cafe um, and you can get, uh, check out our hours and you can order online too. I'm very excited for the guest this week. Um, there's a lot for, for, for people, for charity, so we're gonna, can't wait to hear that interview this week. Um, we had Rusty's birthday this weekend that was amazing. A lot of people showed up. I'd like to thank everybody for coming and we had such a great time. And then on Sunday we had Paul. He was still just going through some growing pains, but I'm sure you know we were gonna have some nice music on the weekends. Uh, this week I wanna just give everybody a friendly reminder of what's on our menu here at Mile Lenny. So I just wanted to feature some items. So we got some black bean hummus, some regular hummus, some pickled onions, some pico de gallo, olives, some tasty eggplant, and we also have beets. All these items are actually vegan and vegetarian, obviously, um, and we all make all these items here. So don't forget to come visit us for this yummy, yummy food. And I'd like to thank Rusty and Jen, and happy birthday to Rusty, the Irish crazy cat. And you know, come visit us, come sit outside. I miss you guys. Thanks. Hey, ladies and germs, welcome to our featured guest for this evening. We have uh, uh, a couple, uh, we have kind of a different type of a surprise. First of all, we have uh, a guy who does a lot for for uh, communities, they can't do much for themselves. And uh, it uh, provides an opportunity for musicians and artists to give back and to support. Um, and that's uh, Jerry Ryan and Elephants for Autism. That's our special guest this week. And we're really privileged to have him and his musical guest, Andrew Cavanaugh. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> How, you How are you? Good. 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 Very good. So, um, first question, let's talk about your benefit, as we mentioned, Elephants for Autism. Why elephants? Is there some kind of significance to that? Yeah. Well, or originally, it was a sp it was a spinoff. I was writing about music, um, Elephant Talk Indian, doing a music series and, and promotion. And um, I just spun off that and used the name for Elephants for Autism as well as uh, for as far as like a community support um, support behind it but uh, mainly the fact that elephants focus on on family and protecting their weak and um, the young is the, this the reason why I used elephants there's a, like also a, yeah. yeah a lot of uh, spiritual like symbolism as well uh -huh. involving like love loyalty and healing with elephants uh -huh. so um, I just went with it I like that yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, autism, uh, without delving too deeply into that, I'm sure it's a subject that's affected you personally going on a special level. Uh, I'm sure that uh, musicians who are out there, they've had their issues with um, learning problems, reading problems, uh, falling into other categories that aren't recognized and, res and respected and, and dealt with properly. So um, if you could give us a little bit of insight into your experience with that side of this, It'd be appreciated. Sure. My my son has autism. He's uh -huh. turning 18 next month. Right. But um he was he was um reading and writing music and playing piano for about 10 years. Wow. And um we would, you know, spend our last time getting them these music lessons. And uh, a lot of families didn't have the the same opportunities as us. So we just wanted to provide the families with opportunities to um kind of especially with nonverbal children with autism to give them like um, communication without, without voice, you know? Yeah. yeah Provide yeah. Like, with opportunities, hope, healing. Yeah. My, my daughter's a speech pathologist in South Jersey. And sure. I bless her. her. She first got her, her bug of working with uh, 
uh, language and pathology through uh, high school, through uh, some interest in, in autism and communication through sign language, which I just blew me away. Right. And something about tablets, I think that she uses tablets. It, it, there's a way to communicate with them for the for yes. people that are more, more nonverbal. Yeah. My he, son has one, but he, he doesn't want to use it to communicate. He, he communicates with, with us, but he just doesn't like using his tablet. But he, he has one. We had to fight for everything fight for all that yeah if the ipads um originally when he was in kindergarten i i had the uh, it's never the teachers the teachers always want to you know are, are looking out for the kids and the you know behind the scenes they're looking, looking out for their you know the bottom line over the best interests of the students hmm. so i had to fight for his whole class one time to get him ipads and i had to argue and re record you know meetings and Sure. be nasty at times just to get these kids what they want because the, they would just straight up lie to you and, yeah. it, and it never ends you continue on with that question yeah you keep fighting and then it's going to yeah. become even harder after 21 that's okay. why now i'm focusing more on adult programs and, and transitional programs because as my son grows i'm going to grow with them and right. start do, doing um different things sprouting connections is is an adult program yeah well, yeah, um, I, I forgot to ask about that. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit more about Sprouting Connections? Yeah, I actually wrote them that down because I didn't want to screw up their um, stuff here. But, um, yeah, they're, they're kind of like basically what they all do is just provide education and support to families and communities, individuals. Um, but as far as as um, what we're doing with Sprouting Connections, they're, they're actually trying to build a farm and and uh, buy a farm and, and employ kids with autism to work on the farm and wow. you know grow vegetables and That's summer. Wonderful. That has like to be that. so healing too for them. Yeah. It's totally different than what I was doing before, which is just focusing on on like uh, healing through music, music lessons, providing you know instruments and camps and free lessons. Mm. And um, now I'm just like whatever, like right. um, mm. you know so whatever can enrich the lives of children young adults with autism and if somebody needs help and reaches out to me i'll i'll help them out well you know with me it's all about productivity and and uh, when i see uh persons who are uh alternatively abled then then i see them as a resource i mean i, I started my nursing career 50 years ago in the state hospital and many of my patients were autistics and they were undiagnosed and untreated and warehoused, you know, and, and I've seen this progression, especially with the over 21 crowd, you know, that I, I've seen how things have advanced and, and I just have to say, thank you for the work that you do. It's just amazing. It's great. Yeah. I love it now. I get, you know, I just feel blessed in, to have an opportunity to do this and be able to uh, connect communities and, you know, you, now, how did it all start? When did it uh, suddenly say, I'm going to do this? Well, I, I started booking uh, music events in the area or in 2010. I was thinking about doing it for years because I was just tired of driving to Philly and New York to, to see great bands. And I was like, I'm going to just have uh, to move there like we did. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to bring them to me. And I, I was going to so many shows that I, I had all the connections with the bands and I was just like in 2009, I just started reaching out to the, to all the bands that I saw on like that, like indie roots level and was like, um, I'm going to do a festival next year. Great. Got one and, you're gonna, and you're going to tag everyone in this interview as well, right? All those musicians. <laughs> yeah. I, potentially I come to our open I, mic. That would be nice. <laughs> well, Khalid Casada is playing the um, autism online festival and he's the only one still around from the, from the first year i think okay. uh -huh. right, but I the it. first year was 85 bands in atlantic city and and there was no locals it was all philly dc boston and i well i added two locals two local bands um juggernaut drunk and bill ride now to to the event that weekend they didn't even know what was happening there was no press you know nothing wow. yeah. Yeah. um do it yourself like i lost probably two thousand dollars um and i i loved it i was just like man i <laughs> i didn't even think about the money i was just like i i set a goal and i i accomplished it and um i did something that you know right. i was the salmon swimming upstream and i but i did it so right. i just kept i just kept doing it 
Yeah. And I'm still doing it. And, yeah. and um, if it wasn't for, you know, channeling the money back into the communities, I wouldn't be doing it. But I just feel like, God, it would be, be such a waste of my uh, resources to just stop doing it when I can keep raising five, six thousand dollars a pop to help people. Yeah, but, right. so, I, what so a, even if I don't want to, I'll just do it anyway. What a crazy group of egos you have to deal with. Congratulations right. on being <laughs> able to manage that. Okay. <laughs> I, I deal with a lot of like um like like the indie rock scene. Yeah. More more than anything. So like you know, folk, Americanist, you know, things like I don't deal with like hard rock or or a lot of the metal and hard rock bands with the egos or the hip hop stuff that bring the egos. Yeah. I but, kind of stay away from it. Uh, but, we, we have plenty of egos in folk rock. <laughs> <laughs> but egos aside, yes. you have to admit, as a music organizer, trying to organize musicians to do something like a project is sort of like trying to herd feral cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what's cool is I don't really do anything. I just kind of like, um, they're just sharing my vision and I kind of just, um, they just jump on board and and it, since everything's for charity and i'm doing all these events they for charity then people really don't give me a hard time yeah that's great i, I could see that sure that's i great. mean some, sometimes there's you know that it still happens but yeah. not really everyone yeah. understands what it's all about we run behind we you know it's it's just like a big happy music community family uh -huh. every you know all the i know most of the bands by now and the bands that i add on are friends with other bands that i know and everyone kind of vouches for each other and well, it's I know, pretty, even, even in my own career pretty smooth i would have to say that early on it was about my becoming a rock star and then it became being a part of this special community of musicians that care about each other and do for each other i mean it's uh it's it's it's, it's our chosen it's family a very, it's a very spiritual yeah. family to be involved with i, I totally get that yep yeah. sure you had That's what I feel like. Uh, they're more of my family. The, the music community, Elephant Talk community, is more of a family than I have. Oh, I've recently found out a lot yeah. about that myself. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me about some of the great musicians that you've worked with that, that have really impressed you. I say, oh my God, that was really a moment. Um. Well, out of the Beard Space was is a great band out of the Cherry Hill area. Yeah. And Hamilton, and they do a festival called Beard Fest in Hamilton. They've oh, yeah. done 10 years. They're, those guys are um, on another level. Mm -hmm. They're probably one of my favorite bands. This band, right. Belfour, out of DC, mm -hmm. is another one of my favorites. Um, there's been, I, I was, I'm writing a book about the local music scene. It's one of two books that I've been writing in, yeah. in quarantine, but I think I've, I've booked over. 3,000 bands. Wow. So that's amazing. Yeah. But playing the festival, I have Khalid Casada who played the first festival and he's, he's um, playing again this year and nice. Nancy Malcoon and Quasimodo bride. Wow. They're, they're locals that are good friends of mine. Ill rendition Camille K 15 year old girl. She's you, you probably see her uh -huh. performing all the time. And the Arado brothers, another teen band. They're wow. coming back again. But uh, yeah, I kind of get to a point where I just forget all the bands that play. Like, they blend I look them. back at the posters. I, I do all the artwork for the posters and I save everything. Like I have a closet full of, full of stuff and I just go through it from time to time. Yeah. I look back and say, wow, check this out. But, Remember yeah. this thing? Well, you know, Jan has a segment on our show called uh, Gigging with Jan, where she talks about activities that are going on in the community. So make sure we have a, a list of all your bands and activities as things come up. Sure. I mean, I'm, I've been mentioning Elephants for Autism for about a couple um, weeks about, now. about three weeks now, yeah. maybe. I've been yeah. saying, hey, you got you got him. You know, check it out. Yeah. We have Jerry Ryan yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. So yeah, I used to be more active and I used to be like a regular promoter that book shows every weekend. Uh -huh. And now I kind of just you know, come out of retirement over and over again to, to help people. So I don't, the only event I have is elephants for autism. And then I'm doing, um, the elephant talk in the music festival, which is, which will be number the 12th year. Wow. And, um, that one's in, I moved it to October cause with the COVID mm -hmm. stuff. Um, okay. I know people are booking shows and doing, they don't care at this point, but I, I'm not going to yeah. do it. 
that's our feeling too. We we have a show coming up on the twentieth where it's called it the the spring spring breakout, and basically it's going to be social distance. It'll be outdoors, but it's a it's an attempt for us to encourage our community. It's time to start coming back out again safely. Yeah, it's I did two now. shows, two shows yeah. in quarantine I've done, and uh-huh. I couldn't bow out of them. So we yeah. did social distance and did the best we could, but um, well, just as we. Just as we showed the leadership to shut down, we also have, I feel have a responsibility to say uh, it's time to start up again. Right, as more people get uh, vaccinated, yeah, it's right. going to happen. So, speaking of musicians, um, I understand we have a musician here that uh, this will give you an example of something that we could hear if we watch Elephants for Autism. It I, couldn't be Andrew Cavanaugh, could it be? It probably oh, is. Oh, that'd be nice. Hi, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. What you got? Hello. <laughs> So Andrew, tell us about yourself. Uh, so yeah, I'm Andrew Cavanaugh. Uh, first of all, thank you, Rusty, Jan, and Jerry for all having me be a part of this today. It's super cool. I would have not known that Rusty and Jan existed should this not have happened. Well, so now I've got well, a whole bunch it. of like flute and acoustic music to go listen to, which is <laughs> stinking awesome. Oh, um, cool. Thank you. So I, I, as a musician myself, just a little, little backstory, I, I have a bachelor's in music from Westchester and a, uh, uh, I'm a board certified music therapist uh, going on almost a decade now. Um, I, I actually got my degree in oboe and saxophone. Um, oh, wow. I'm sure we have play... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, I, I definitely want to talk to you guys more and do the Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. The well, I friend like, you like, today. Maybe so. we can oh, make they... some cool <laughs> stuff together. Yes. And the other yeah. thing, we, we have a string band who would be calling your name as well. So, <laughs> hey, you know what um, a mummer is? I'm all is? for it. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> a mum- yeah, the mummers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, one of my good friends well, uh, in college. So. Oh yeah, well we're mom. Oh, awesome. If we didn't try uh, to recruit you, it would go against the code. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, you, you might not have been on yet. I, um, I I did mention I'm actually in Massachusetts now. Um, right. I live about 400 miles from you guys. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, well, yeah. But I grew up in, in Millville, New Jersey, sure. and uh, was playing a lot um, in a band called Rocklanders. And Jerry was booking us pretty regularly we uh we played a lot for jerry nice. um and uh there was another booker uh Dalny, down there um that both of them kind of worked together it seemed like at least from my aspect uh but i was down in atlantic city a lot uh for those guys and that's how we got to know each other but um it's been uh music is kind of the only thing i've done uh since i was uh probably about 10 yeah uh, when I, I started the saxophone in third grade and then it just kind of you know, I hated practicing. I hated doing my scales and all that crap that everyone's like, you must do this. You must do this now. And so I, I w- I've always been a more free form, like learn out of necessity. But I just did things that I thought were cool. So I wanted to pick up guitar and then eventually I picked up piano. And then in college, I just I was a saxophone major and I said, heck with it. Let's learn the oboe overnight. Uh, and <laughs> so I did. And it's, it's just always whatever I can get my hands on is what what I wanted wanted to work on, what I want to do. The um, musician so I, I I love all things that make sounds. <laughs> how how do our viewers uh, find you? Do you have a website? Uh so I actually in moving up here, I, I've started the Cavanaugh Music Company, uh, which offers music therapy, music lessons, and performance entertainment uh opportunities. And that website is currently in the works because I just got here <laughs> and just started this. You but if you want to find uh, solo material, um, I've done a lot of songwriting uh, for more acoustic and folky stuff uh, on my own. And that's andrewcavanaugh.bandcamp.com. Okay. Um, there's a couple albums on there of original material. And I also did a Halloween covers album last year. And a uh, just put out a single of a Terry Terry Reed cover, which many people don't know Terry Reed, but uh, it, it's a song "Seed of Memory" from back in the '70s. Uh, so I just put out a, a cover of that on Bandcamp as well. You can also find any of my music on Spotify, uh, iTunes, YouTube Music, the whole anywhere you stream something, uh, you can find my my solo work, my original stuff. Great, it's play awesome. a song for us. All right, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, this uh, this first song I'm gonna do um, 
is called Only Revolutions, and it's off a EP I put out in 2011. I actually recorded it on a MacBook in my college dorm, uh, and it's all acoustic, very folky. Um, but I thought the two songs I picked for today I, I thought were pretty appropriate for what we're doing. Only Revolutions is, uh, you'll hear the lyrics, it's very much about looking to the world and trying to find the understanding in your place and what you're supposed to be supposed quote to be doing and where you find yourself in all of this mess which i think is more relevant in this past year than any other time i might have played this so this is only revolutions uh from my first ep which is on spotify <laughs> Under a tombstone sky, there's a fallen cross next to a rock that sits in a yard surrounded by trees. And off in the distance, a dark spark keeps time while the cold wind whispers through the dried out Safe in the house, a mother tells a child that her worth corresponds with all the deeds we've done. Then the scares her to death. She sits by the window, wondering if heaven's got a place reserved just for them. Well, we way in the right time to find out what we're missing Lord, we just blown away with the sands of time Is there something we are missing? Oh, oh, oh. With light, and the boy sits out upon the rock as he wonders if the trees can really see. When the sun hits his eyes, he squints and speaks. Lo, what a world this could be! If we only try. Heart cries out from overhead To so the field mass below Soon you'll be Dead And on it goes It goes, it goes It's only revolution Soon you'll see I give to you You give to me And on it goes Well we way in the right time to find out what we're missing are we just blown away with the sands of time is there something we were missing oh and I feel like this place was beautiful absolutely lovely was guitar great. playing very nice. thank you 
Thank you. So, appreciate our that. guest. <laughs> we, back to Jerry. That's right. We'll be back with more from Andrew Cavanaugh after a few more minutes with Jerry. Right. So, the next question is, what venues have you worked with? Um, I started off in Atlantic City working with Le Grand Fromage and the Boneyard, which were right next to each other. And uh, I did the first uh, eight festivals, I think, Elephant Talk festivals and the first five or six um, Elephants for Autism festivals in Atlantic City at those one of those two venues and both sometimes before moving out to the watering hole when the Grand Fromage and Boneyard both closed. You know, now, some of us from the area were familiar with Atlantic City and we've seen the rise and the fall and the Trump and whatever else, you know. Um, and we as musicians, especially from the uh, the West Jersey side, so, uh, love, to, love to have a place at the shore, love to have a venue at the shore where we could play it. You've seen music at the shore go through so much in the last 15, 20 years. I wonder if you could comment on how the ups and downs of uh, playing on the shore, what that's like. Well, for, for original music, the the perfect recipe is usually a, like a failing bar. Uh -huh. um, there's not many places that will, will host us. So I was always fortunate to and loyal to the Grand Fromage and the Boneyard for, for having us for so long and, and um, focusing on originality in the arts for so long. Now that those two venues are closed, they still have Beret that's doing original music, but I, I'm just not interested in, in doing shows there. They also have Anchor Rock Club, which is a which is a bigger venue that with the, with the upstairs probably holds about 800. Yeah. And um, I have done three or four shows there and I'm just can't wait till it opens back up so I can go back into the city. Well, offshore offshore is cool with the, with the parking and the traffic yeah. and um, the bar tabs are, are beautiful and the food. But um, I people still generally like to be in Atlantic city. Sure. Oh, I can't wait to be in Atlantic city the first year that it's legal, but first legal summer. Oh yeah. That's going to be quite an experience just to see. Not that I would partake or anything, you know, it's oh, just, no. uh, uh, but that, that's the other thing about the business um, everywhere. Uh, the pandemic uh, filling up large venues, close to close, elbow to elbow, no masks, uh, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it, it's it's going to be different. You know, mm -hmm. you wonder if it'll ever be what it once was. How do you feel like the pandemic affected your fundraiser? Yeah. I mean, obviously you went virtual. <laughs> and well, in my case, it, you know, it's all about raising money and, and going virtual. We, we raised more. So I was happy about it. <laughs> Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to do in-person person shows. Yeah. I'll do whatever it needs to be done, you know. Well, you know, I, I think I say that every week with uh, the pandemic and, and what we're doing now, which we've never done before. Um, it wasn't so much about shutting down. It was learning how to adapt and do what you do in other ways. And some of us have. For it was a, you know, not that it's a blessing because 500,000 people in the United States died. But it did give us a chance to, you know, to stop and smell the roses and, exactly. and focus on some of the things that matter in life, like um, the more important things like like family and, um, and autism. Yeah, and autism. And, and just it, it gave people a little extra time to um, focus on some things maybe they forgot about, follow their heart more. Not to mention that I, I don't think these virtual shows are going anywhere even after oh, this yeah. is over. I think people like them. I mean, of course, you'll do some stuff in person at venues and that'll right. be great but this these were born out of necessity and i don't exactly. i don't think they're going anywhere though after this is over for years sure. I've, for they, years they've I've been, been around been, before for years i've been looking for a gig i could do without pants you know yeah. <laughs> well, we can't see it so yeah yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> but um, i'm imagining what it looks like oh you don't want to imagine that no. <laughs> <laughs> and i'll tell you yeah, yeah. So, um, as we understand, you know, you're generally very philanthropic. Um, tell us about what other benefits you've organized. Uh, I've done benefits for 
most of the nonprofits in the area. Um, well, it's not just autism, but but I with the Elephants for Autism, I focused on um, originally was the Ozon Music School uh, with the teachers Faith Ozon, but she moved out west. And then I started. Um, I did a fundraiser for the Academy for of for Special Learners in Reconcomo. And then after that, I started, I did like the next three or four festivals for the, for archway programs in, in ACCO. Excellent. And now my son goes to school there. I'm familiar with the program. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, fun. their upper and lower school music program just yeah. off of the events. Yeah. So that, that was great. And um, now we're doing this, the sprouting connection stuff. And other than that, I worked with the sunshine foundation on events and, yeah. and, Mostly uh, anyone that's reached out to me and, and needed help, I've I've helped them. Right. Uh, I think there, there's been a number of people with health concerns that you've done. Yeah. Before. Oh, yeah. We've participated. You in them. You, yeah. You've been on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we <laughs> always will be. One. Yeah. yeah you and you're, you're part it. of that. Um, you know, I'm just organizing it. I need, like, it's a collective effort to, to village. make this happen. Yeah. Absolutely. But do it alone. Yeah. You need you need to do a um, an event at that bar across the street from Lucy, don't you think? I tried oh. to book a show at Lucy, but they they did not. Oh, I don't know. They're missing out. They just don't see the bigger picture, you know. But well, I, I was gonna just like when it closed, just jump over the fence with. I know, one. right? That's, <laughs> well, when you're ready, we're ready to jump with you. <laughs> What's crazy is I know know the guy like the, the oh, run, yeah? and I have all these connections of you know. <laughs> I'm sure people that are friends with him and you know it just he just never made it happen but i reached out before and then i was just like i got to a point where i'm just like now i'm looking like an a-hole oh well yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, this. like i said i'm gonna i want to do an event for you bring 50 bands out here bring my own sound crew We're, all the money we raise will go right back into lucy the elephant and the guy's like um giving me the runaround and i'm just like okay you just Whatever. lost a lot of money well, you know what? We'll jump the fence. We'll do a few numbers, yeah, but, we'll, yeah, but we'll film it. But we'll film it from the back end, and we'll oh, blame no. him for yeah. it. How about that? <laughs> That's where I was going to film from, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go back to Andrew, tell yeah. us how everybody can watch Elephants for Autism next week. We're just getting involved in general too. Yeah. Well, right now it's just on on Facebook, um, Elephants for Autism Online Music Festival the um, group page and um i guess all the artists are, are streaming from their own pages and it's going to be public and then i'll just kind of share them all to the um group page just so it's organized and archived i'll try to make sure that our that ours is set to public before you're just here to public right <laughs> no that <laughs> i forgot to set it to public before. Some, yeah well you, you know, sometimes <laughs> even mine is, isn't on public because, um, you know, with all the, the political stuff, you, you know, you know, you were just constantly being trolled. So you have to just uh, keep it on private for a while. Yeah, exactly. Forget to turn it back. So um, back to Andrew. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute. That helps. Yes, that there usually does help. I'm learning, too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So why don't you play us one more song? All right. So this song uh, is one of my preferred closers when I do original sets. It's called Consider Yourself Not Alone. And uh, I think the name kind of speaks for itself. It's a very communal, we're all in this. Things are bad sometimes, but hey, that's life. We're here together. We will survive. We will get through it. Um, and so that it, it's one that I, I typically like to do at the end of sets. And it's also got a little bit of a, an Irish feel to it at times. So uh, with St. Paddy's coming up soon, I figured it was an appropriate one to toss in here. But uh, you can find this on Spotify, Bandcamp, anywhere else. Um, it's on my first full length record, AK1. <laughs>
to the edge of night Where are those demons from the day will be sitting by your nightstand waiting for your dreams Here they whisper their songs Pulling us down All the while these street lights they've been singing the songs of the night Oh such sweet songs they've been singing in my Well the night's not as dark as you'd like to believe Well it's sure as the dew at the dawn But if there's one thing I've learned It's family comes first So consider yourself not alone So consider yourself not alone La da 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 La da da La da 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 La da 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 I've been walking this earth for 30 damn years And I'm damned as the devil if I'm wrong By blood or bone or deeds yet unknown Consider yourself not alone Yeah, consider yourself not alone Yeah, consider yourself not alone Wow, that was great. I like that one a lot. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. We'll, Thank we'll you definitely much. be be checking out more of your music, yes, Andrew. Yes. And we will have you as a guest. <laughs> well, I appreciate all of that. <laughs> I appreciate you guys having me for the first time and for Jerry uh, thinking of me to, <laughs> to have me on. All right. Well, so um, we wanted to thank both of you for coming on our show today. Yeah. Oh, it's been so special. You know, it's uh, um, just some of the issues that we've been able to talk about today and how important they are and uh, and if we've ever, if we were able to shine any light on anything that either one of you guys are doing, well, then I had a good day. So, thank you so much, not for not just for being with us, but for all the other things that you do as well, and for allowing us to be a part of it. I appreciate you because without you, I wouldn't have, I would have no press for this well, event. Yeah, awesome. I, I don't even reach out to the local press anymore, as far as the um, Atlantic City press or anything like that. I feel like. Yeah. They always fail when it, when it comes to having their finger on the pulse, they always, they always fail yeah. and to focus on things that are positive in the community. And, um, I'd rather do interviews with, with indie press any day of the week, but I'm, I'm happy you reached out because I, you know, just lately I've been just dragging and I, I haven't been reaching out to anyone and I haven't even been promoting the, the festival as much as I should be because I put so much into that the sports camp fundraiser before that wow. and i just it just burnt me out but oh, i'm gonna yeah. in, the, in the last week i'm gonna go i'm gonna be back to normal and i'm gonna raise as much as humanly possible 
Well, well we yeah. hope that this interview will help to bring some attention to it and get I, some people to come yeah. and watch and uh, hopefully donate. And I know, I know people have said it before. They said, well, Atlantic City, it's coming back. Well, I'm sure it's coming back because you're going to make a comeback, and it's nice to see people like you out there actually doing that. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, and uh, we'll see you Thank out you. there. All right, take yeah. care. Thank you. Bye -bye. Nice meeting you all. Oh, yeah. nice see you next week. All right. Yes. Great. Bye-bye. And now it's time for Rusty's Senior Moment. So, Rusty, what was this about you living in a mental institution? Huh. You're not surprised, are you? No, not really. Well, when I was 20, I couldn't find a job. So my Uncle Jack found me one at Trenton State Psychiatric Hospital. Um, I remember that night as I dragged my oversized suitcase through the hospital grounds and as I was startled by a resident screaming, please help me, and uh, I didn't know what to think and what had I got myself into. And then I approached the nursing quarters, the forced home, which was an old nursing quarters, and it was just a building that had a lot of one-room residences. So I moved into my room with a sink and a bed and a dresser, and uh, the following morning, I walked to the main building where the back wards were. I was shown to a large day room, about 25, uh, 30 men who suffer from all types of psychiatric disorders, from paranoid schizophrenia to cerebral palsy or whatever else was affecting them. Differentiating between the diagnosis was not a high priority back then. This was back in the uh, early 70s. If you want a fairly accurate picture of the working environment that I had, well, then I would encourage you to watch One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with Jack Nicholson. That's about as close of a representation that you'll ever see. That was where I met Michael. He seemed to be a young boy, but uh, he was probably my age within a year or two. He had red curly hair that seemed to share the same Irish heritage that I had always enjoyed. Because of this, he was often the staff's special project, but none of us seemed to be able to stop the recurrent nightmares and violent hallucinations. One day, his agitation seemed to be worse than usual, and we went, he went bouncing around the ward, upsetting all the other residents. We had to contain him in a seclusion room where we eventually had to restrain him to prevent him from hurting himself. We were unable to communicate with him as his words made no sense. But his eye said, please help me. The behavior got worse and the flailing around the bed got worse until he became silent and died. I was very young and had lost my first patient. I didn't know how to act or how to feel. And I was getting frustrated with the incident of abuse and the part that I played in it by witnessing without intervening. I expressed my concerns to my supervisors, but I could not see a solution within the bureaucracy of the state agency, so I left. This is how the state treated mentally ill. They were hidden away and protected and cared for and abused by those who were supposed to protect them until the doors were open and they were all released to the streets with the promises of community shelters that never seemed to materialize in sufficient quantities, especially in more affluent neighborhoods. Today's services are provided up to the age of 21 through school systems. After that, parents are frequently left without resources for a child as grown or as large as you or I. It's because of that that we focus on advocacy this week. And while we choose to focus upon the tremendous work done by Jerry Ryan, and elephants for autism, and I wish them great success as they fight the challenges that make a normal existence so difficult for our alternatively abled children. I wrote this song to honor men and women who struggle with psychiatric disorders. And my friend Michael. He was a 
friend of mine Locked away inside these walls Because he lost his mind Asylum screams and silent dreams Go round inside his eyes Michael is a crazy boy to stay there till he dies. Crazy boy, oh crazy boy, they do not understand. They cannot even look at you, much less to take your hand. Crazy boy, oh crazy boy, I'm here right by your side. Don't know how to love you, cause they've never seen you cry. Oh, please don't cry. Satan's coming after him with pitchfork in his hand. He sees him in his crazy eyes but does not understand. They'll push his thoughts out, rip his brain, and push him while he can. Then pull his hair and pray to God to be a normal man. Sing a song, oh Michael, sing it for a while. Sing a song, oh Michael, oh, let us see you smile. Sing a song, oh sing a song, sing and I will play. Sing a song and we'll pretend today's a better day. Tell a joke, oh Michael, we're laughing to the night. Tell a joke, oh Michael, i hide you from the fright. Tell a joke and make it good, oh one will all enjoy. You'll be a man tomorrow, so today just be a boy. God, please tell me what to do, Michael's going wild. It seems he just can't take no more, we'd better get his file. He's pulling teeth from out his mouth, we'd better tie him down. We'll have the doctor look at him and pray he comes around. Crazy boy, oh crazy boy, they do not understand. They cannot even look at you, much less to lend a hand. Crazy boy, oh crazy boy, I'm here by your side. They don't know how to love you, oh, so I guess they let you die. Let you die.
So, Jan, it seems like we have uh, taken a slightly darker path with this week's show of Rusty and Jan. But I hope we did show some light on some very important issues. But at least we can shine some attention on the people who are making a difference like Jerry Ryan and Andrew Kavanaugh. You know, I found in my experience that many of the disabled are lonely. Uh, and with their appearance maybe scary, their, their love is immeasurable. I encourage you to reach towards disabled persons and experience the moments only two such persons can share. And speaking of love, we love you all and appreciate how you support us in all that we do. Next week episode will feature Melanie's own Keith Shaw. You'll see him a lot of times on our open mic. Yes, and he sure does seem to be making the rounds and actually getting somewhere. We'll find out next week on The, the Rusty, Rusty and Jan, Jan Show. show. Thank you.